In this section, our objectives are to evaluate indefinite integrals and to find general and particular solutions to differential equations. Antiderivatives, integration rules and formulas. The function f, notice this is capital F, is an antiderivative or indefinite integral of f, this is lowercase f, on an interval i if capital F prime of x equals lowercase f of x for all x in the interval. What does this mean? Well, we've been studying a lot of derivatives lately. So if we look at the prefix anti, not, against, opposite, think of going backwards from the derivative. Think of it like this way. If I give you a function y equals x squared and say take the antiderivative, I'm asking what did the function have to be that would give me the derivative of x squared? So maybe instead we think of it like call this f prime. It is the derivative of some function. What is that original function that this is the derivative of? So we think backwards and we think about how the exponent had to be one bigger because we subtract one to get to this exponent when we take the derivative. But what else did we have to do? Well, in taking the derivative, we would multiply by three. But since this is a one coefficient, multiplying by three to give me one would mean I'd have to have a one third coefficient here. So the antiderivative of y equals x squared would be f of x equals one-third x cubed. Or that's at least one of the versions of the antiderivative. G is a general antiderivative of f if and only if g of x equals the antiderivative of f, capital F of x, plus c, where c is a constant of integration. So let's go back and think about that example again. If I take the derivative of 1 third x cubed, yes, multiply by 3 gives me 1, subtract 1 from the exponent gives me 2. But if I say the function 1 third x cubed plus 5 is the original function, doesn't it have the same derivative? Because I take the derivative of this power function, I get x squared. I take the derivative of the constant, I get 0. But instead of plus 5, that constant could have been 5 pi. That's also a constant whose derivative is 0. With that in mind, I could have also subtracted a constant like 5 pi or even 5 pi times 100. No matter what numbers I multiply or add to this, it's still a constant. And when I take the derivative of that constant, I still get 0. So when we say what the antiderivative of the function is, we always have to consider the possibility of a constant. And we call that constant, in general, c. Because that constant could be anything, its derivative is still 0. So notice again this notation. The general antiderivative is the antiderivative plus a constant. Because the derivative of that constant will always be 0. A differential equation is an equation that involves derivatives, like this one, dy dx equals f of x. We can also write this in the differential form where we multiply both sides by dx and get dy equals f of x dx. This is another form of a differential equation, an equation with derivatives or differentials. If we take that differential equation, dy equals f of x dx, and we take the indefinite integral of both sides, remember that indefinite integral is another way to say antiderivative. 
So antiderivative is what we're doing when we use this integral symbol. I'm taking the indefinite integral or the antiderivative of dy, which means I'm getting rid of the derivative. I'm undoing the derivative. What does that give me when I undo the derivative of y? It gives me just y. The integral or the antiderivative of f of x dx gives me the integral of f of x dx or the antiderivative of f of x, which we're calling capital F of x, and then of course plus the constant of integration. So again, the integral, the indefinite integral, or the antiderivative of dy, take away the derivative, I am left with y, equals the integral of f of x dx. So when we are solving the differential equation, doing anti-differentiation or indefinite integration, we're taking the integral of f of x dx. So again, that elongated s symbol is called the integral symbol. And the f of x in the integral is called the integrand. It is the function that we are integrating, the integrand. And when I take the integral of f of x, I get capital F of x plus c. And that is called our general solution. General because it encompasses an infinite amount of solutions depending on what that constant could be. Let's take a look at some rules and formulas that help us to take the antiderivative without having to always just think backwards. In these rules, k is a constant and n is a real number. So when I integrate 0 with respect to x, I get a constant c. c is a constant. This is the constant rule. Just like we talked about previously, because taking the derivative of, of a constant gives me 0. I can always check by asking what's the derivative of my answer. It should be the integrand. This is taking the integral of a constant with respect to x, such as taking the integral of 8 with respect to x, gives me 8 times x plus c. Why? Because the derivative of 8x is 8, and the derivative of c is 0. Again, that's how we check by taking the derivative. The derivative with respect to x of 8x plus c is 8 plus 0, or just 8. I check by taking the derivative whether I do that in my head or on the paper. This rule is like the constant multiple rule for taking derivatives. A constant multiplied to a function in the integrand is the same as if I take that constant multiple out and multiply by the indefinite integral or the antiderivative of that function. For example, thinking of the trig functions and their antiderivatives is basically thinking backwards. I know the antiderivative of cosine of x dx equals sine x plus c because the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Similarly, because the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x, the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine of x, and so on and so forth with the other functions whose derivatives we know. We know the six trig functions derivatives so those derivatives, I can take the antiderivatives and come back to the original function. Anyway, back to the original point. As an example of this rule, if I take the antiderivative of 8 times the cosine of x with respect to x, that's the same as saying 8 times the antiderivative of the cosine of x with respect to x which is the same as saying 8 times sine of x plus c. This one is a rule we use most often. That's our power rule. So think of the integral or the antiderivative of x to the eighth dx. 
This is the power rule that we looked at before in that example with the x squared and going backwards. So to think backwards on this, we're adding 1 to the exponent, so x to the 9th, 8 plus 1 is 9, and dividing by that new exponent. So see, we add 1 to the exponent, divide by that new exponent. Add 1 to 8, get 9, and divide by that new exponent of 9 plus 1, sorry, 8 plus 1, right, or divide by that exponent of 9. So, of course, we have plus c, so we can write this as x to the 9th over 9 plus c, or 1 9th x plus x to the 9th plus c. This is like when we take derivatives, a sum or difference can be broken up to do it one at a time. Like these examples. Let's notice the directions. Find the antiderivative, or the indefinite integral. Check the result by differentiation. So notice I'm adding two different functions. So I can do each antiderivative one at a time. Let's start with x to the fifth. Using my power rule, I add 1 to the exponent. That gives me 6, and I divide by the new exponent. 2 is multiplied to the secant x tangent x function. And if we think backwards, what function has a derivative secant x tangent x? secant x is the function that has that derivative secant x tangent x. The 2 is a constant multiple, so it gets multiplied to the antiderivative, and of course I'm adding these two antiderivatives. I always remember that plus c, the general constant, goes at the end because the derivative of c is 0, and there's always 0 that's added to that integrand. Now I can clean it up, x to the 6th over 6, plus 2 secant x, I don't need the parentheses, plus c. And I know that this is correct because when I check by taking the derivative, I get that integrand. Let's do that check just to make sure. So when I take the derivative of x to the 6 over 6, well, this over 6 is my 1 6 derivative of x to the 6 is 6x to the 5th, plus 2, the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x, and the derivative of c is 0. So 6 divided by 6 makes 1, and this is exactly what I started with as the integrand. So I know I'm correct. Let's take a look at number 2. The antiderivative of x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by x to the fourth. Just like when we take a derivative, we don't want to have a quotient, and there is no quotient rule for antiderivatives. So first we're going to rewrite this by splitting up the numerator as divided by x to the fourth, each part. So this is the same as saying the antiderivative of x squared divided by x to the fourth plus 2x divided by x to the fourth, minus 3 divided by x to the fourth with respect to x. We always have dx there, that differential, until we've taken the antiderivative and got rid of the derivative. Let's rewrite this so we don't have quotients. So the antiderivative of x to the negative 2 plus 2x to the negative 3 minus 3x to the negative 4 dx. Maybe if we use parentheses, it'll help us contain everything. And now we can use our power rule. So we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by each of the new exponents. So this becomes x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus 2x to the negative 2 divided by negative 2 minus 3x to the negative 3 divided by negative 3 always dividing by the new exponent, and of course, plus a constant. Now we'll clean it up a little bit. This makes negative 1 over x, 2 divided by negative 2 makes negative 1, x to the negative 2 means over x squared, plus, because we've got 3 divided by negative 3, but I'm subtracting, so negative divided by negative, so 1 over x cubed, and then plus c. 
I know I'm correct because I can take the derivative and see that I ended up with what I started with in the integrand. For numbers 3 and 4, the directions say to find a general solution of the differential equation. Again, a differential equation is an equation with derivatives. Notice how this problem is shown slightly differently than the previous ones because it's not already written with an integral symbol. When it says find a general solution, it means solve it to get no derivatives. So to get no derivatives, that means we have to take the antiderivative. First, let's rewrite this. This is the same as saying dy dx equals x to the 4 thirds. So it's using the power rule instead of radicals. If I multiply both sides by dx, I get dy equals x to the 4 thirds times dx. How do we solve the differential equation? We take the antiderivative so that we don't have a derivative anymore. This leaves us with y on this side, and on this side, I use the power rule. Add 1, which means adding 3 thirds, and that makes 7 thirds as the exponent, dividing by the new exponent of 7 thirds and adding a c. Now, I don't like dividing by fractions, so instead, we multiply by the reciprocal, 3 sevenths, x to the 7 thirds plus c. Notice how we write this answer. It's an equation. That's slightly different from how we did the previous problems because it was just the antiderivative to find. When we have a equation given, we give an equation as an answer. So if given an equation, Answer must be an equation. Now, of course, we can check the result by differentiating, by taking the derivative. Let's take a look at number four, since it looks like we've got a lot of different types of symbols. Remember that another way to write this is when we multiply by d theta, so dr equals pi times the cosine of theta plus 9 times d theta. We don't want derivatives, so how do we get rid of derivatives? Take the antiderivative. Antiderivative of a derivative makes the derivative go away, so r is left over. No differential, just the original function r. Pi is just a constant multiple, and what's the antiderivative of cosine theta? Sine theta plus 9, its antiderivative is 9 theta. Check in your head by doing the derivative of 9 theta, which is like 9x. The derivative of 9x is just 9. Then, of course, plus a constant. So here's my solution, my general solution, of my differential equation.